guys. Part two here, pretty much as I left you at the end of part one. I've just checked this here since um, since we took that last pass, and it is coming out at. We've already gone larger than the one and a half inch, which it was. So. It's uh, 1.512, and I only want to go up to 1560, 1 1.560, which would be the start point for threading, and uh, that register will be done later. All right, so that's what we're going to start with. I'm just going to take, uh, set myself up on here. It's only, I've only got to open up 24,000, so I'll go two tens and then we'll check it. Check that again. Most of this is very slow phases, so it's not really worth videoing all that much because there's a lot of slow repetition. Let's see where we are on that. There's five, five fifty and a couple of tenths. So we'll finish that carefully. Right now, you might hear the wind, it's blowing a go. <laughs> I'm just taking some uh, steady cuts here. I'm going to get the register out to 10,000 short of what I want, and uh, then we can get the threading done. I have actually managed to get a third <laughs> threading tool to what I wanted. Somebody suggested using the undersized one and just making an advance on the compound, but I'd rather go straight to the size I've got, ideally. got the air on. I'll just sweep that out a bit. In theory I've got a just a few thou to go. Let's see what we got. Uh, 725, a couple of thou short of 740. I was going to go to 740 but that'll do will use up, where's my pointer, will in quotes use up that depth whilst we're threading. Um, the other end here on the spindle is uh, smooth, free of thread, so I might remove a bit of thread at the end there finally, not that it's too important. Anyway we'll get this We'll get set up for threading. When I'm set up on the gearbox for my 6 TPI and it's always a bit difficult <coughs> to check on a scratch test plus the fact this is a square thread anyway. So <coughs> my check here is just putting a dial indicator touching the uh, carriage and I got my handle in the spindle. I turn until, there we go, just starting to move. Go around six turns. Two, three, four, five, 
and it's just about coming up to six. And that's on back back on zero, and that's one inch, and uh, that's an adequate check. So I'll try and set up, take the first cut or two by hand. Uh, <clears throat> taking a couple of three passes, taking it very very steady here. <clears throat> Excuse me, I've still got uh, handling the spindle. If it's going all right, I might go onto the back gear. But it's one of those jobs where I'd rather take it slow. Concentrate a lot on this, so I'm not, going to, I'm not going to video all of it. If I'm thinking about the video, I should be making mistakes. So I'll come back to you when I'm getting a bit further down on this. Oh, by the way, it's blowing a gale again. I meant to mention, you might notice this boring bar is not dead straight in that axis. The reason is, I hadn't quite got a square cutting face on the uh, tool. I hadn't realised, so I had to bring this slightly back, so I was getting a square cut. You may not notice a lot, but it's there. It's, I don't know, a degree or degree and a half out of alignment. But the tool's set up right. A little bit further. One thing I was going to mention, I do, I'm only taking two and a half thou cuts, and uh, Every now and again I stop and do a spring cut just to sort of catch up. Let's just check, this shouldn't take much off. So it's just a, a little bit so I can go back to a deeper cut again. This cut should get us down to uh, 55 nominally. It's uh, slow going. I don't know whether everybody does this, but I do. I keep notes of uh, each depth setting so I can come back to it, or the next setting. you just got to be so darn careful. Ah, uh, well, uh, it's a long job, that. I'd have bored the living whatnot out of you if I'd kept the, t the video running for all of that. Once I got down to the theoretical I just had to uh, do a few little incremental tweaks, very, very small. I'm just going to check here again for a minute. I've got to see if I've got the... Uh, let's see, hang on a minute. Yeah, that's all right. I was aiming for half a thou plus, but it's nearly a thou, but that's, I'll go with that. I've got to put a chamfer on there and uh, just take a thou or so off there to face it. And I think we're in, we've got a fit now. I can't quite. Oh, cast iron dust. Makes a mess. Now this, um, oh hang on, let's zoom back. Now this uh, great big dummy slug <laughs> um, goes into the back plate of my old three jaw with a little bit of slack. And bear in mind, I've still got some dust in here. 
Uh, bear in mind that the spindle has slightly more wear than these threads here. There we go. So I think I'm going to call that good on the thread even if it was a smidgen tight, which I, I very much doubt, even if it was a smidgen tight on the spindle, uh, I'm pretty sure it's going to go. And the other thing is I'm just going to probably go into the back here, which I don't suppose you, you can see fully now, and just uh, machine off just a little bit. Otherwise there's a rather untidy thread end. So let's uh, try and get a chamfer on that. Sorry, forgot to run the video there. I've just put the boring bar the other way with the boring end. So use that to get a little chamfer. Now I'm just going to take a f tiny little face cut on there. Rather a small tool this one but uh, I've got a set that have got supposedly uh, good inserts for the ca cast iron on. <laughs> That's my handle glove. All right. So I'm just going to clean up the back in there, which you won't see a darn thing. Then I think we can take it out of the chuck. Well, I've certainly had some fun here. <laughs> um, back plate's going on now, but it was, it has got a tight spot. And there's freedom on the thread at the moment, possibly a bit too much. But because I want it to uh, tighten up on the shoulder, I'm going to actually stay. What I did actually was to keep the back plate in the chuck, take the chuck off the spindle, and try, try, try the back plate for fit. So what I've got here now is just this rather tight. And that now is all the way up. I haven't moved the camera, you'll have to take my word for it. Unless I can find a mirror. Let's see if a mirror will actually do anything. I'll take it take it back from it's just that tight spot there. Now this may or may not show. Try that. It's not a very good mirror, actually. I don't think I can't see whether it's showing or not. I don't think that's going to help. Anyway, take my word for it. That uh, just that last that last bit and it's not the register because that has that's dimensionally adequate but once that's taken up on the right up tight we're good to go I mean it is on the tight side but I can't I can't consider trying to ease anything else to be honest, because there's a lot of weight here, I've got to be a bit careful. A bit careful there as it slackens off the threads. Anyway, the you might see a bit of uh, black ink in there because I 
gave it a good coat of Sharpie to try and find any binding spots. But I'm going to stick with it like that. I would rather it went up tight. And uh, once we've got a chuck on it, we'll be okay. But I've got to put this back on the spindle on its own to uh, machine the faces so that everything's nice and parallel. So we'll get to that next. Well, I hate cast iron. Well, in terms of the mess, black dust and everything, I can't even cover anything here to make much difference. Um, I'm just showing this <laughs> absolute pain in the butt trying to get round the back of this piece uh, just to clean it up and get truth on it. So I had to put the compound at a weird angle and stick out this tool to get, I can't even get quite up to the boss at the back, but it's, it's enough. So I'm going to change back to something more orthodox and deal with the front here. Um, I've taken a light cut or two, but I've got to get, basically now, just get the register down to probably two or three thou below required for the chuck and uh, get chamfers on the edges so I'll uh, I maybe run the camera again there's so much dust coming off this so I don't want to get it on the lens although I'm not that close uh, I've got this register to do now I won't cover all of it because I'm one of the problems on this old machine working right up here Everything goes a bit tight, which is understandable. Um, I haven't got room for a, a stop, which I normally use. So I'm using a magnetic uh, indicator on the rail down here. You can't see it. So I've got to take off... Um, I've got 83,000 to take off, so I'll get part of the way down and I'll check it. filthy stuff. Um, I haven't got a mic big enough for this so I have to use this uh, really old vernier. It's all right actually it's just very hard to read but it does give me the chance to uh, get a fairly accurate measurement. Let's check That's okay. I think I'm in a bit close actually. Now I've got to read this scale is terrible. Five three five. Five three five. Right, I can take another few cuts. I'll leave the video off because I say there's so much of this darn dust coming off this. Be dared to finish with this devil. Got a few little marks just uh, just in there. It was the end of the threading tool. Not too worried about it. So we've gone down on the register. I've got a little bit of chamfer here and there. So we've gone down to about minus three or four. I forget now, to be honest. And I think hopefully. Here we go. You just feel a couple of three thou movement there. So we can hopefully do a bumping job on it when we install. But the next thing is, which I don't really look forward to, is getting the uh, whole series done. Because I'm very tight for space on the Y axis on the mill. So anyway, that's hopefully the lathe aspect finished. And uh, next time we should be in the mill, whenever that is. I've got this pretty much dialed in now. Graduations are uh, 
five tenths. Let's just check again. As is often the case, even the machined uh, cast iron surface is not necessarily absolutely perfect. But that movement there, I can't get it absolutely static. It's probably about a tenth. So I'm going to go with that and uh, let's get zeroed. Alright, I'll bring you back when we've got some uh, holes on the way. Uh, first hole, I'm not videoing all of this because um, I've actually, I actually made a screw up a little while ago. There always seems to be something. This uh, stub drill that I was going to use and I was checking for uh, travel on the on the quill and I just bumped it against the very edge of a parallel chipped the corner so now I've got to do things in a more complicated manner which is basically involving sorry I'm in the way here uh, what I'm doing is to play safe anyway uh, I'm using a spot drill then one size down of stub drill because it's nice and rigid and then just put through this uh, letter Y just to finish off and that should give us there that's pretty good I want it fairly free I think the clearance drill is 10.2 and this the Z comes out at 10. 2425 something like that. I think that'll be adequate, hopefully. Um, so I'm going to press on and I'm using the vacuum a lot. I've got rags everywhere. This dust gets everywhere. Mind you, it's mostly chips now, which is fairly reasonably clean. So we've got to go across, uh, go across on the X. I really, sh I might as well stop running this in a minute because there's not really a lot to see. I'll crank it up again when I do the next hole. All right, hole number two. We'll spot it first. Would have been so much easier if I hadn't spot my nice little stub drill. Right, change over to the stub. Right, let's vacuum up the mess and then put the uh, let a Y through. Let's finish off with the letter Y. Okay, <clears throat> that's uh, two holes done. Slightly laborious, really, having to do a three-stage operation, but I've got to play safe on it. So, I'm going to work towards the others. I won't bore you with them all, because it's the same process, another four times. <laughs> <coughs> I 
<coughs> Excuse me. Yeah, I'm most annoyed about chipping that uh, stub drill I wanted to use. Never mind, slow but sure. Last phase of the last hole. Just put this letter Y down through. You might notice, I don't know, the glare might be excessive. The machining on this backside here, which was very hard to get at, very hard. I had to fake up all sorts of things to get round the back of this. So there's some chatter marks, but basically, and also I couldn't go quite into the center. That's why there's this little bit here. I probably took off more than I needed, but there's plenty of meat there. Right, bit of clearing up to do. Then we'll take this out and see if it fits. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> let's see if we got the math right. I haven't put a chamfer on these at the moment. Let's see if we get And I'm not sure whether I've left quite enough leeway on the uh, register. I think I left about four thou just for a final bumping to get things set up. I just hope it's hope it's all right in that respect. So let's finish doing these up. Always a slight sigh of relief when the damn things go in, <laughs> don't you think? <laughs> All right, I'll come back in a minute. I've left the overhead light off. <clears throat> you may or may not be able to see the indicator. This is the metric one. So, uh, 10 graduations is uh, 4 thou. I thought it'd probably be too good to be true for it to be absolutely spot on straight away. It's the only reasonable bit of drill rod I've got that size. I haven't got anything bigger that I can find. It's got about four and a half thou. And I've already tried a bump. And I think it's probably probably gone as far as it can. I had to cut down a cut down an Allen wrench too to get round the back. I, I may well change these out for a hex bolts I think. Let's see if this is uh, that's loose. Make sure this is I, I don't think it's going to go anymore. This is very fiddly to get out at the back. So, uh, still grease to clear off these too. So, it's uh, a bit more than I wanted, but I guess, I think the thing is, I didn't leave enough leeway on the register. So what I'll have to do is to take the back plate off and reduce the register by another well, a couple of thou in theory, probably three, and see if that'll do the magic. I actually left it only probably only about four thou minus. So I'm going to take another three off, and give myself a little bit of leeway. see what we got down to.
These things are big and clumsy. I said earlier they're very hard to read. All right, that that may be enough. I don't want to take more off than I can help. So I'll just put a very slight, very slight break on that edge. <laughs> That'll work. <coughs> okay, we'll set that up. I think I'm going to get some hex bolts. The uh, Allen head ones, they're, not, they're so awkward to use. I've got so little space around the, around the back, around the back here. I think we're nearly done. Long fiddle, the last stage here. Um, I've cleaned up this bit of drill rod, just polished it slightly, they had one or two little marks which made the needle jump. I put the overhead light off, thinking you might see this indicator. It's swinging over just less than two thou. It's about, I'm guessing, it's a, this is the, my, my metric which is so sensitive, I love it. So each graduation is um, just under half a thou. Let's just set that to zero. Uh, it's yeah, it's still just under two thou. It's about as good as I can get. I don't think I'm going to get much better than that. So I'm going to make it a wrap, I think. I've got to take these jaws off at some point. There's a load of grease inside, which I think is going to want to fly out. <laughs> so, all right, let's just uh, run her up a minute. Let's see. Got a non-machined end on there which makes it look a bit funny but uh, for the time being uh, at least we've got it got it together <laughs> trouble is I'm never satisfied <laughs> So let's do a wrap. Well, there we are. That's uh, got that job out of the way. A few hassles here and there. I said earlier, I think I've switched from uh, cap screws to hex bolts. It's a lot easier to make the adjustments on the back of the back plate, particularly at the end stage where I was using the uh, uh, this thing. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. Tiredness takes its toll. So anyway, we've got within about two thou on the, uh, well, with the projected piece of drill rod, which I think is straight, but there again, it's a piece I've had for a long, long time. It may not be perfect, but for the moment we're within about two thou there. Um, I may do some more tweaks on it later, but uh, I think I got tired of working on it actually. <laughs> I ought to get back to the uh, cute sharpening sometime, that's been ages since I did anything with it. And one or two other small things that uh, are in mind. So anyway, that's a wrap. If you got to this stage, <laughs> thanks for watching. <laughs>